the Trinity. A Christian belief that there is one God in three distinct persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All are co-equal and co-eternal. They're identical in attributes and no one is inferior to the other. Is the Trinity in the Old Testament? If we say yes, this leaves us with three possibilities. One, God's chosen people for thousands of years were worshiping a false god. Two, the Jews from the layperson to the rabbi were so incompetent that no one was able to identify the Trinity. Three, God was so discontent with the Jews, he sealed their hearts, keeping them from understanding his triune nature. Now, if we say the Trinity is not in the Tanakh, because God is still revealing himself, this poses yet another problem. For example, if we look carefully at God's jealousy, we must say that God the Father, God the Son Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit are equally jealous. But we know from the beginning, God the Father was the only one recognized and thus worshipped. It is not until much later that Jesus and the Holy Spirit become objects of worship with the Father. So are we to believe during this long period, while all praise was going to the Father alone, Jesus and the Holy Spirit were okay with being ignored? What about Genesis 1.26? Let us make mankind in our image. Professor Andrew Davidson writes, all Shemitic languages use the plural as a means of heightening the idea of the singular. The precise kind of heightening has to be inferred from the word. We find the same idea echoed in the Encyclopedia of Hebrew Language and Linguistics. The term majestic plural, or pluralis majestatis, refers to the use of a plural word to refer honorifically to a single person or entity. Moreover, in the first chapter of Genesis, the passages that begin with God are always followed with the third person pronoun he, but not they. One would think, if there were truly multiple persons in the Godhead, the Almighty would have used the plural pronoun they when referring to his triune nature. Did Jesus teach the Trinity? Let's say he did. In many passages, we find him confirming the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Here Jesus is only reiterating the same theological confession like those before him. He doesn't add a word. He doesn't offer a new meaning. And most important of all, he doesn't say how he himself is part of the long-awaited Trinity. This leaves us with three possibilities. One, Jesus was a horrible communicator. Two, Jesus was being deceptive by concealing the Trinity, or three, Jesus never taught a Trinity. Why didn't the Trinity make headlines? If this doctrine was truly circulating in first century Palestine, it would have sent shockwaves across towns and cities, leaving every Jew confused. For certain, Jesus would have been dragged in front of the Sanhedrin to further clarify his new definition of the Shema the same way he was summoned for breaking the Sabbath. Also, are we to assume the apostles readily abandoned their simple understanding of the Shema for the mysterious Trinity without asking a single question? The least Jesus could have done is give his followers just a brief explanation of this new doctrine. Love your Lord with all your heart. This becomes burdensome when attempting to apply it to three persons. After all, Jesus was the one mocked and ridiculed. Jesus was the one betrayed. Jesus was the one spat on and beaten. Jesus was the one who suffered agonizing pain. So with all that Jesus has done, is it not natural for one's heart to love him more than the Father and Holy Spirit combined? I'd say the heart of a Trinitarian can look something like this. Is the Trinity confusing? Well, if one plus one plus one equals one, I'd say that's more than confusing. This formula requires us to abandon the most basic operation of arithmetic when dealing with the most critical decision one will ever make. Here's what's at stake. Either eternal excruciating pain or eternal euphoric 
bliss. Now, we all agree God is not the author of confusion, but to accept this concept is just another way of attributing confusion to him. For this, it must have been borrowed from other cultures. We find many. A trinity in Babylon, a trinity in Egypt, a trinity in India, and a trinity in Rome. The word trinity is not in the Bible the same way the word tawheed is not in the Quran. Here's why this is a faulty comparison. In the Bible, we don't find words such as trio, triad, triune, or trinitarian. As for the Quran, we do find the words ahad, al-wahid, wahdah, and the closest to tawheed is the word wahid. Why did the Trinity win out? You see, Jesus was explicit in saying he was only sent to the Jews. However, when his message moved beyond Jewish territories to pagan Gentiles, this meant Jesus was no longer viewed through his Jewish lens, but instead through a lens of the pagan world. Consider these stark differences. Jesus was born in the first century. His place of birth was Palestine. He came from Jewish roots. He was a rabbi and he spoke Aramaic or Hebrew. Now, here are the cliff notes of those pontificating about the nature of Jesus. These intense debates transpired mainly in the 4th century, almost 1900 kilometers away in Constantinople, involving men who came from pagan roots. They later convert and become bishops, and the language used in such debates was either Greek or Latin. So in a nutshell, this is how Jesus went from a man in Jerusalem to being part of a triune God in Constantinople. Perhaps Jesus warned against preaching to the Gentile world out of fear of his message being distorted. Well, unfortunately, that's exactly what happened.